going down to the next page real quick, there's one statement right there. This is just to solidify what this self-determination is all about and who's saying it and why they're saying it and whether or not it's valid about what I'm saying about it. Well, this was Truman in 47. We believe that all, peop that all people who are prepared for self-government should be permitted to choose their own form of government by their own freely expressed choice without interference from any foreign source. So if you do it peacefully, they say they're not going to interfere. And I don't mean they're going to help, but they ain't going to interfere. Down to the next page, this is the Declaration of Principles of International Law Concerning Friendly Relations and Cooperation Among States in Accordance with the Charter of the United Nations. Bearing in mind, this is the third paragraph, bearing in mind the importance of maintaining and strengthening international peace founded upon freedom, equality, justice, and respect for fundamental human rights and of developing friendly relations among nations irrespective of their political, economic, and social systems or their level of development. In other words, you don't have to have a big level of development to come out. As a matter of fact, the, the founders of the United States of America didn't. People say, well, they were the big wealthy landowners. They did control a lot of equity, but technically they didn't own any land. That was all given by grant of the king. The king owned the land. So they were not big wealthy landowners. They didn't own anything. They not at that point. Now, it was different when they came out. Now, they did some things wrong. You know, we have to look at that. People look at that declaration. Who think they're party to it, by the way. That's why they think it's so sacred. They're not party to it, and so they don't understand the errors that were made. One of those errors being that these men said that all men were created equal. Well, they didn't believe it. That's why they had slaves. So that in itself is shocking to the conscience of the universe. They're not signatory. I mean, if people haven't gotten that yet, they're not signatory to the compact. The Constitution was not created for you. It was created for you because as a constitutor, if you go into Black's Law, Ray, and you know I'm again, keying in on words, constitutor, it says that it's one who by simple agreement becomes responsible for the payment of another's debts. Well, since the USA and the U.S. are both indebted to the international creditors, and then since Americans under law where they have surrendered all rights, all title, and all interest, you have no right, you have no title, you have no interest, therefore you have no claim, you can't state a claim, but if you want to keep thumping that Constitution, then pay the debts and just go along to get along because that's what you've agreed to. I didn't make it up. That's their copyright. They put it in their books. I do get to read their books. You know, and constitutors by simple agreement become responsible for the payment of someone else's debt. So if you're going to agree to be a constitutor, then pay the debt, and what are you disagreeing with? And under the 14th Amendment, it says that if you, as a U.S. citizen, and this U.S. citizen mean a state citizen, a national, a resident, an alien. They're not signatory to the compact, therefore they have no political rights, they have no political standing, therefore they're granted civil rights. And as a citizen, as an American, whatever it is, with no rights, no title, no interest, no claim, it says that under the 14th Amendment, you have to pay, you cannot dispute the debts of the United States. And if you do dispute the debts, you are guilty of insurrection and rebellion, and anything it costs them to crush your insurrection and rebellion, they will charge it back on you again. That's the system, period. Principle of equal rights and self-determination by the virtue of principle of equal rights and self-determination of peoples enshrined in the Charter of the United Nations, all peoples have a right to freely to determine without external interference their political status and pursue their social, economic, and cultural development, and every state has a duty to respect this right. I'm going to go down to the paragraph where it's underlined here, the establishment of a sovereign and independent state, the free association and integration with an independent state, or the emergence into any other political status freely determined by a people constitute the mode of implementing this right of self-determination by that people. As every state has a duty to refrain from forcible action which derive, deprives people referred to above in the elaboration of these principles of their rights of self-determination and of freedom and independence. Okay? But this freedom and independence means taking responsibility. You now have to form your own. You now got to support your state support your society, support the declarations that you believe in. That's what they've always done, and that's why they respect it so much. I know I've been through this, Ray. We've talked about it. I've seen them return honor for honor every single time. With me, when they wrote me as an ambassador, when I had to go testify in court, um, when they accepted my documents, you know, it was a fearful thing because I mean, even though I knew this, 
I didn't understand that they would actually would honor it. I've been told this, but they're not going to honor that. They're not going to honor these international treaties. And then in the same breath, they'll, they'll go, well, don't I have a right under this code? You just said that they don't honor anything. So you're telling me they won't honor an international treaty, but you think they're going to honor a code. The point is, I've seen it. They do honor this. That's why they've written me the way they did. Maintaining this international public order is the key, not trespassing across other states. The Declaration of Rights and Duties of Nations, this is another treaty. The political existence of a state is independent of its recognition by the other states. The state has a right, even before recognition, to defend its integrity and independence, provide for its maintenance and prosperity, to organize itself as it sees fit, to legislate its own interests, to administer its services, and to determine the jurisdiction and qualification of its courts. The exercise of these rights has no other limit than the respect for rights of other states in conformity with international law, and that would be to keep the peace, period. Let's go to the next document, the rights and duties of individuals. I'll just show you where people that are going into these courts don't have any rights to go in there and say anything. Under Article 7, at the, near, close to the bottom down there, it says every individual is, individual is entitled to be protected and assisted by the state to which he belongs. Do you see the same language there that was in the International Convention that was held in 1928? Yes. Same language, to which he belongs. This has nothing to do with political rights. It has to do with the rights and duties of individuals who are under someone else's constitution or compact because they've not, they have failed and not taken the responsibility to come out and exercise the right of self-determination. Every individual is entitled to be protected and assisted by the state to which he belongs in a manner established, in a form established by treaties and by international law. Again, the international law is supreme, period. And the constitution is an international document maintaining international public order. No individual who, according to the law of the state against which he institutes a claim, and I don't care if it's an administrative claim or a lawsuit in court, as a citizen of that state, be he state citizen or whatever they think they are, they will not be entitled to any such protection. The point is, if they belong to the state and then sue the state or file a claim against the state, be it on a UCC or be it in the court or wherever they file it, then they're not going to be entitled to protection. They've now sued the state. In the U.S., the last time I checked, and I've been doing this for about 8 to 10 years now, if you lose protection of the state, then you become public enemy number one. You become a paper terrorist. Uh, actually now, as far as the state citizenship stuff, Ray, i got a court document here. State citizens now are not just called paper terrorists, they are called domestic terrorists in the court. They will be crushed because it's a violation of Patriot Act, it's a violation of Homeland Security, it's a violation of now what they passed last year which was uh, Senate Bill 1959 to crush ideological terrorism. And it is ideological terrorism because you're coming in and claiming that you got, that you're signatory to a compact on a state that you're not. So you're, you're Well, part of this is done by ignorance. Some of it's done with um, good intent through ignorance, but it's still it's still ignorance. So, you know, the good intent from the system, they don't care one way or the other. It becomes questionable. Well, let me tell you a little bit. Time out. Time out. That means time out in Cuba. Oh, yeah, they got, plenty of the, they got plenty of those for people. Their code is copywritten. The only people they give a license to practice with that code are the attorneys, period. You don't have a right to practice with the code because it's under copyright. People say, well, they published in the Federal Registry. Fine, they published in the Federal Registry. So what? Where did you get your contract to practice with it? So a pro se or a pro per uh, uh, are, are recognized. It's all for show. It's all for show. They can do whatever they want. If you're suing the state 